Hello, the internet. It's me, Ted from Mob Rules. Um, so something came out of the blue today. Not today. It was a uh, little bit ago. But uh, they came out in sales a few days ago. And they're coming out today because I'm looking at them today. Uh, so it has nothing to do with today. It's not today at all. There's no today. Other than you're watching this today. But whenever that day is. Um, so anyway, we got some Terminators. We got some Castotes Terminators. The Alaris. Um... And, I don't know, this is pretty exciting for me. I'm really excited about those bikes, but I'm also excited about some Terminators. And, uh, what I'd like to do is take a look inside this box, um, uh, using x-ray vision and an X-Acto knife, and see what exactly is in here, and then put it together, and maybe we'll do a little paint-up. What do you say? AA? AA? I mean, it's, it's gold, so, uh, lots and lots of gold. Um, can't be that hard, right? Right? Alright, let's take a look. Alright, here we go. Da, 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 da. Pay no mind to all the demons laying in the cut. And I don't know if any of you noticed this, but I was wearing my Custodes t-shirt to go along with this super nerdy event. Not that much of a fanboy. But uh, yeah, pretty much. Alright. Plastic. I wish there was a good use for all that uh, cello wrap. Cellophane? Cello. Alright, here we go. The box is empty. I'm going to live in it later after I pay for all the new models. Um, oh cool, so we have some, it looks like some point values. That's pretty dope. I haven't really been looking at too many of the new kits. Oh shit. Shield captain. Oh man, this is cool. Oh, it's just, oh it's different languages. I was thinking they had like the whole uh, codex in here, but it doesn't, I don't see any point values. Are there point values? No point values, so if you're doing PowerPoints, you're good to go. Uh, otherwise, yeah, what else? All right, first sprue. What do we have here? The Vexila, one piece. Oh my gosh, remember the one that came on the uh, uh, Shield Brothers? Not Shield Brothers, the, the regular Custodes? It's like 13 pieces. So that's dope. Okay, so we're simplifying things. Uh, here's the Messer Shrings. Um, oh, this is interesting. Okay, they're doing the uh, shin plates separate. I can't remember. It's been a while since I put together a regular custode. Um, but I can't remember if they did the shin plates separately. I don't remember them doing that. So this is kind of like a Primaris thing, right? Um, so that's pretty nifty. It gives a little bit more dimensionality to everything. Um... And then let's see, we have uh, a cape, a cape. And let's flip it over, it looks like all the details on the other side. Okay, so we have the little slot for the um, grenade launcher. There's a grenade launcher. Uh, how many feet are there? One, oh, it's a toe. One, two, three, four. Oh, no, no, no. Okay, that's a toe. So one, two, three real quick three there's gotta be more than three really where's the rest four five what I'm really hoping for is additional legs I want some other options for building these guys um, here's one two three four okay yeah so there's six okay we just have the the basic leg options you're not gonna get a lot of posability differences um, so this is interesting. So we have the whole front piece. You know, this is a total deviation from the way uh, they used to be. Not custodies. I guess somewhat custodies. But, you know, back in the day when you had your space marines that were legs, torsos, and that was it. So this is, you know, everything's uniposed nowadays. Um, this is kind of a bummer, but, you know, you can put more detail and pretties in them. So for thigh plates, we have one set, two set, three set, four set. Okay, so there's... You do have some options on thigh plates. Um, so then this guy, what is that? Um, so you're just going to be putting, ah, uh, okay, okay. So you're going to have the same staff, um, but then you're going to either use the axe head or the glaive. It looks like, let's see, what do we have? Three glaives, three axe heads, and the vexilla. So you're not going to have a lot of options there. Um, although you, ooh, I just noticed that you do have four of the uh, power knives. That's pretty nifty. Um, 
Let's see, what does this guy go on? I think this is this goes over the over the shoulders. It's their hoodie, and then I think their um, their top knot fits on there. Uh, so there's three of those. Is there a fourth one? Uh, nope. Let's see. What other sweet options are there? Uh, sh shin plates. One, two, three, four. Five, six. Okay, just six shin plates I'm seeing. Um, okay, so notice when I was pointing out earlier, when you had like one full front piece, it looks as though you have one guy that has, uh, he's pregnant belly, so you can put the little babies in there. Um, you know, you were thinking the same thing too. All right, maybe it's just me. Uh, so you can put different belly plates on there. It looks like as though you're probably going to have like one as the, the, uh, the captain, the shield captain, I think it is. And then one is just a regular bro. So if you're trying to beef out your squad, work over the character, you can do that. Um, so then, what are the other things we're looking for? We're looking for shoulder pads. Um, there's one set, two set, three set, four set. Okay. So beef up your guy, beef up your guy, or your squad, beef up your squad, and then this is your character. All right, so top knots. We have one top knot, um, two, three. Okay, three top knots. That's all I'm seeing. Um, num, 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 num. What else is we're looking at? Oh yeah, my favorite. How could I forget? Heads. Ah. Uh, oh. Okay. Yeah. So we have three helmeted, three helmetless. Let's see, take a look at these guys. Uh, one guy with a mohawk, one guy with a high and tight, and then the other guy is bald. I guess I should, there we go. Oh man, you know what's kind of neat is that bald guy, he looks older. Like, I think it's like the creases in his face. Like they just, he just looks like an old man. And a lot of these guys are over 10,000 years old, so that totally makes sense. So, and I was looking at, uh, what was it, Valoris, uh, the main character, I think the, the model that they have, he's looking, the way they painted him, looking old, whereas in the, um, what was it, the uh, book eight from the Heresy, he's looking pretty young, so that's cool that they aged him a bit. Uh, and then the helmets, those helmets are pretty nifty. Yeah, I don't know, they, they look like, uh, some of the models that I've seen for you know, like optional uh, Mark IV armor, they kind of look like that. So that's cool. But considering these guys are, it, it looks as though their armor is like a modified um, cataphracty armor, you know, with like the, the little tassels and stuff. Um, so it's neat to have that blend of Mark IV and cataphracty, the old and new kind of slamming together. But, uh, yeah, um, let's go ahead and plop one of these guys together and see how it goes, then painterize it, eh? What do you think? Okay, so first off, um, just a, a couple tips. I'm gonna go ahead and hit this with an airbrush, um, and as such, you know, I got him pretty much taken care of. Uh, he's missing his skirt, um, so I'm just gonna, I'm gonna paint this separately and then uh, glue it on. I just realized that part of his skirt is actually um, connected to his legs. I didn't realize that until now. Um, but what I'm gonna do is uh, I'll, I'll, I'll airbrush this and then, um, and then I'll go ahead and like hand brush it and then I'll probably end up feathering it in. Um, and then after that's done, then we'll glue all these little pieces. Um, and yeah, let's take a look at that um, because I think it's like really important that this is uh, faded really nicely. Um, so I'm going to go with purple because I want to go with the Aquilin uh, guard. I just, I just need a little purple in my life. <laughs> All right. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have a good base color, so I'm just going to mix up um, a little bit of this uh, just regular blue and Ferrari red from the Vallejo line. When I do the actual, um, when I do the highlights, I do have some GW colors to use. So we'll see how those work.
All right, I'm gonna bust out some Gene Steeler Purple for some highlights and see how that goes. Um, right now, I kind of have this deep purple. It's almost a black. Uh, so we're gonna have to slowly build up our other, our Gene Steeler Purple. Yeah, there we go. All right, so we're gonna get some copper. This is uh, Vallejo Air. Honestly, I'm not a huge fan of this one. Um, it just comes out a little bit flaky. Um, I really, gosh, find an alternative. I bet, honestly, this is something I wouldn't mind. You know, GW probably has a nice alternative. So here we are, just a easy base coat. Um, I did grab a little bit of uh, Relictor Gold. Um, we're gonna use this as a subtle highlight. It's just a subtle highlight. Um, I think it turned out really nicely. So uh, let's give this a second. We'll change gears and uh, move on to, actually, let's go ahead and hit that ax here in a second. We'll get some blue. Let's start with some blue. That's it. Let that dry. All right, let's throw this guy together real quick. Okay, let's go ahead and touch up that base and uh, I'll take care of that real quick. This is just a little bit of black going in here. Okay, so we're going to start with, uh, what the heck is this, uh, Mechanica Standard Gray. Doing just a quick dry brush. Then we got some, it's just like a light gray. Uh, I don't know what you'd use otherwise. Just light gray, whatever light gray you can find. Do they still have Space Wolf gray? Because I was contemplating using that. All right. There we go. And we'll pick out a couple of rocks later on. Pick out your favorite rocks. We're going to get our burnt umber going on. And uh, we're going to try to, yeah, we're, we're just going to go in here and hit all the leather bits. I think that's, uh, oh, oh, there's some in the back. There we go. 
All right, so I'm gonna go with just like this generic gold. I don't know what the equivalent is, um, but we're gonna go ahead and hit the uh, um, some of the bits and bobs on that axe. I gotta do that before we do the casing. Uh, so. The reason for this is that we're going to um, we're going to use a different kind of wash on this than we will on a lot of other things, and we're we uh, it's going to be a brown wash, and we don't want to tarnish uh, the rest of the uh, the casing with brown since it's going to be black. I think I might have switched up too soon. Looks like I missed a little bit on the handle, or the uh, hilt, no, the handle. Okay. Okay, let's get some of this uh, Rackarth flesh. Um, we're gonna use this on a couple little rocks as well as um, his cords. Now, I kind of screwed up. I think that had I planned this better, I would have left the mysocordia off until um, I had all these details. Oh, that's the puppy. All right, hopefully she'll relax. Um, but yeah. yeah, you can see where I'm kinda, I'm gonna have to battle this thing a little bit. Also, um, you might notice that there's a little bit of uh, glue back in there. Um, be careful when you glue those plates on, they didn't quite, line up the way I thought they would, uh, and I ended up shoving them further forward, which is why all the glue's there. The nice thing is, is remember earlier uh, when I said we'd have to uh, paint that little a piece of uh, uh, fabric? There's that little chunk of fabric. Uh, it's almost completely covered. You will need to touch it up just a little bit, but not too bad. Uh, and I think with that glue, I might just try to uh, put a little bit of art coat on it before um, like after it's all done, just to make sure the uh, uh, the gloss matches. Okay, let's pick out a couple of rocks. There's some cords in the on the front, but let's do that while we're back here. I put that tree right in the way. <clears throat> okay. Okay, I don't know if they have blood red anymore. <laughs> you probably notice they use a lot of old paint, but it's still good. So let's go and hit that top knot. Lead Belcher.
Okay, so I just kind of sped this up a little bit. Um, what I did is put a little bit of uh, lead belcher in there, hit a lot of the gun parts, and I used the instructions as kind of a guide as to what I was going to hit. Um, let's see, any other funny business? I got the his face, um, his gun, his little chains. Uh, I think that's it. Oh, yeah, I got the vents inside there. I'm trying to figure out like what to do back here just to kind of differentiate some things. I think I might use some washes to try to discolor um, those, uh, I, think, I don't know, I think they're like power cells perhaps. Um, anyway, so let's go ahead and hit this with some Nuln Oil. And we're just, uh, we're just getting that lead belcher. All right, now we're gonna get some Agrax Earthshade. And um, I'm gonna start by throwing it around like a wash a little bit. And we can get those rocks that we were looking at earlier. And then, let's see, where are we gonna go? Um, I think on the, on the gun a little bit. Be really careful not to get on the blue. If you do, just keep it really close to the gold. And let's get the hair. We're gonna focus mostly on the underside of it. And the sides a little. This is gonna be our shading. Or start the shading at least. Okay. Oops. A little bit of eagle at the bottom of the that guy. Okay, let that sit for a second. Gilliman Blue. Let's see how this works. I don't know if this is still a product anymore. All right, we're gonna hit those uh, those cords that he has. I made a little mess. I think that's a start. Oops. I don't really like how that turned out. Okay, we're gonna have to touch this up, but that's that's where it is. Okay, so I uh, we're gonna, I'm gonna go and hit that uh that tree. We're gonna start with a little bit of um, screaming skull. Sometimes these pots don't want to stay open, so I just jam a brush in there. There we go. I'll we'll wash that, of course. So let that dry. All right, so um, let's hit that, uh, now that this thing is dried, let's go ahead and hit the whole uh, tree with a little bit of Agrax. Or 
Road for Let's Drive. So we're almost there. Now, unfortunately, we're, <laughs> we're at the part that I really didn't want to do. Um, and that is uh, a whole lot of pin shading. So we're going to kind of go through with some Agrax Urshade. Um, and I'm trying to... I'm trying to get this just in the recesses uh, of all the detail. And then I'm going to go over it later with uh, some sepia. And I'm trying to be real precise about this. Just get it in the crevices. Uh, we might have to hit this a couple times. So what we're going to do eventually is fade it a little bit more. I hope you see what I'm doing here. I'm actually just going to wash it in here. This is going to be a pain in the ass otherwise. And then we'll uh, pick it out later on. Once again, we're going to hit it with like a wash. And then once we get out to the edges, I'm going to use a little bit of water, not too much. And then just kind of pull it into the recesses. Same thing down here. Bring it around the center. Add just a little bit more and then pull it into the recesses. There we go. Same thing. Actually, this one we won't have to pull into the recesses. It's there we are. And then I'm going to just throw it on like a wash onto the leather and onto those little doodly bops down below. And let's see here. I don't need too much for this. There we go. Okay. A little bit around here. You know what? I probably should have put some, uh, oh well, some silver into the his uh, inner elbow, whatever you call that little recess. Oops. Um, let's get the Aquila. That's a little bit too much stuff. A little bit too much wash. So we'll spread it over here. Then go back over here and hopefully I can lap some of it up. And use it down here. Pull it out a little bit. We're going to probably hit this uh, the Crux Terminatus. Um, with uh, some more silver. Just going to differentiate the metals. So it's okay if we kind of slap it on. There we go. And I'm just going to bring some of it into underneath his arm. as a bit of a shadow. Bring it around. Yeah, it's going to look good. Okay, where's more recesses? Gosh, I kind of just want to just glop it on. <laughs> so tedious. The nice thing about this is, you know, when I was saying earlier that that uh, that copper had a tendency to. Uh, sputter a little bit like this should unify it like it, it those little flex won't be as apparent okay and 
And this technique really could be uh, put on a few different times. Um, I think it would ideally take a few coats. Oops, I just realized I might not have been focused properly. I'm sorry if that's the case. I've been focusing so much on painting. the fingers. Uh, we already got this, but I'm going to hit it again. Didn't seem to take too greatly. Pull out some of that extra. Okay. Get our little detail work over here. Top of it. I'm gonna hit the underside of his arm again. And then get in here. I didn't do a very good job of uh, airbrushing that misericordia or whatever it's called. Now, the reason I'm uh, painstakingly picking out the details is if I just did a blanket wash, it would uh, um, it would muddle it. I want to be very controlled with this. And, you know, if you're going to be doing custodes, you only have a few models. You may as well make them look good. And if you're doing a whole army of uh, you know 12 point custodes, like that would be a different story. But considering you're only going to have maybe 20, probably less. I think it's worth your time. Okay, get into the shoulder a bit. May as well hit those leather chunks. Do that like a wash. All right, what are we after next? Let's do the underside of his hair again. Just this time we're just really doing only the underside. Okay. Oh, look at his head. Just the side of his head. Okay, now that this is dry, I wanna come in one more time. Oops. I just wanna get the bottom the shoulder pad. Same thing over here. Oops, let's get the bottom of that guy too. Okay. Alright. You know what? Maybe we'll just throw it all on the Oops. I hope you didn't hear me fart. Okay, underside of his arm. Okay, let's let that dry a little bit. So I think next is, um, Gosh, this video is gonna take forever to edit. <laughs> uh, where to go? Seraphim sepia. Ew. All right. So now I just want to put some. Um, I'm kind of using this to put a little bit of color back in into this guy. And I'm mostly gonna look at the re uh, at the recesses. I'm sorry, not the recesses. Um, the areas that would be shadowed. Um, Okay, I gotta get my water closer. And, cause I think that the uh, Agrax makes things a little bit chalky and that's not what I want. Um, I'm gonna use a little bit of water. So every once in a while I'm gonna dip my brush in the water. 
and just kind of feather feather the sepia in a little bit. Mm. Yeah, this should give a little bit more warmth to the, the model. I might take a couple passings. Ah, getting sloppy. It's getting late. Underneath the armpit. I'm really kind of glopping it on underneath there. Underneath his arm. And there's another arm. I know we already got the back of these shoulder pads, but I'm kind of doing a few layers. All right, it's coming along. It's a lot of steps, but we're getting there. Okay, we're getting there. I guess it wasn't too painful. Um, so next thing I'm gonna do is get some Chaos Black on there. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with the underside of the shaft. Um, so we're, yeah. That way, what this will do is it'll allow us to be uh, moist um, longer on top because then we're going to switch over to the gray and we're going to wet blend a little bit of the a uh, um, little bit of gray into the into the black. take it off this in the future might not be a bad idea to paint the head separately the uh, the axe head okay so um, I'm just gonna prepare by getting that uh, Mechanicus ready Let's start with down here, because I'm not going to hit this with gray. Oh, shit. I should have painted that slower. That's okay. We have time. Okay, hit it real quick with a little bit of the gray. A little bit of gray. There's a lot of back and forth here. Ah. Okay. On to the bolter. Oh, it looks like there's too much paint on there.
dried too much. Okay, that's good. Beautiful. Just gonna hit a little bit more gray up here. And that's done. Let's go back and get that uh, lead belcher. Ah, crap. I'm getting sloppy. And while we're at it, let's get the inside of his elbows. We're gonna hit this with null oil again. Okay, I think we're good. All right, let it set. All right, let's go and hit that with some null oil. Uh, and oops, where'd it go? And what was the other part? Oh yeah, the inside of the... Okay. Um, now... Oh gosh, what was it that I was going to do? I was going to... Um, damn, I can't remember what I was going to do. I had something really important that I was going to hit up. Um, okay, well in the meantime, until I remember what, what it was, uh, let's go ahead and um, get some gems. So this is gonna be another one of those like quick back and forth, a little bit of um, uh, wet blending. We want something that's a bit of a ultramarine blue and then a really light blue. Um, get a nice uh, itty bitty brush. Let's see if I have one. Yes, there it is. And hook up some gems. I'm gonna glop on quite a bit of paint. And then quickly bounce over to the uh, the light blue and put it on the bottom part. And then blend it a bit. Okay, do that with all of them. And use a little bit more blue. I don't know that this is a gem, but I'm gonna do it anyway. I remember what it was that I was wanted to. Okay, gotta throw in a little bit more blue, darker blue. Okay, there we go. This one I globbed too much black. Uh, I did that without you guys seeing, sorry. Okay, so it looks like we have one on the belly. Uh, some on the shins. Oh gosh, the tabard looks like there's a ton of them. Getting a little bit lazy with these now. Do two at a time. Okay, what do we have? We got the abdomen. Oh, I gotta get the thighs. Ah, forehead. All right, let's give that a moment and we'll get some white on there. Try 
Okay, I think I got them all. Oops. I probably didn't show you any of that, did I? Remember when I said I forgot something? I remember what it is now. Let's do the uh, handles to stuff. I'm just gonna do Screaming Skull. Um, typically I use like a terracotta, but um, I think the terracotta is too close in value to uh, this gold. So let's go ahead and use the Screaming Skull for a little bit of pop. And we're just gonna kind of go back in here. A little bit in here. Now we'll get the Mysocordia. Lately I've been blending these handles, but I think with this guy there's so much going on, so many transitions, so much blending with washes that I just I can't bother to do anymore. Okay. So we're gonna cheat and let a wash take care of those for us. All right. So uh, during the intermission, <laughs> I ran to the store and picked up some uh, some new purples. So let's give those a shot. I think I'm gonna try this, uh, uh, what is it called, Zarius Purple. Try something a little bit lighter. I pick up the uh, Jean Steeler purple. But it's not light enough. Let's go ahead and add. So we added a little bit of Rackarth flesh to our Jean Steeler purple. Little marks, little slashes. There we go. Adds a little bit more interest and intrigue. All right, guys, we are so close. Oh my gosh. So um, let's go ahead and do some a uh, uh, little bit of highlights on the silver. And this is uh, Stormfang silver. I guess you could also probably use a Runefang too. We're just kind of picking out a couple little pieces for now. And also hit it, hit it up a little bit like it's some micro texture. And then while we're at it, um, let's do some of the, 
remove it. Oh, I forgot we were going to do some of that, uh, um, the wash on the handles. Looks like I screwed up on that halberd a little bit. A little slashy. So this side would probably be a little bit more well used. Although it didn't really make a much difference. So as you notice, I forgot to drill out the bolter hole. So I'm just gonna put a little bit of silver right down here to fake the edge of the edge of the barrel. Hopefully for a mile away nobody will notice. Okay, all right. Let's get some agrax in then on those handles. There we go. I think that'll look pretty good. There we go. Yeah, looks good. Okay, this is being really nitpicky, but let's do this uh, tan shadow uh, for a couple little slash marks on the, the tiny little leather bits that nobody will ever care about. <laughs> There we go. It's coming along. We're on to the last bit, so we're gonna do, uh, just grab, we're gonna have to mix a paint. Um, I haven't found one that I like uh, that's just right out of the pot, but we're gonna go for a Stormhost Silver um, for half of this. Let's take a big old dollop, put it on the thing that you count as a palette, <laughs> and then we'll do Liberator Gold. He actually wants something that looks kind of like, I don't know if you can tell, but we're just trying to lighten up the Liberator Gold, give it a little bit more silver. We're gonna kind of bounce it along the edges a little bit. Actually, this brush is too small. I think the trick here isn't to make a fine uh, line. We don't want it to be a consistent line. Uh, you want it to be a little bit jaggy. Have some control with it. Don't let it get out of hand and look gloppy, but you want it to look kind of war-torn. So if you 
just kind of shake your hand ever so slightly. I think that'll give you the effect that you want. So it's just a little bit of rub. Okay, um, I'm actually gonna add another swath of, see it's hard to get a, this perfect paint. So I'm gonna add another brush load. So now we're at like a kind of a two part silver to one part gold. So that gold is really potent. There we go. So we're kind of using this as highlights and also micro texture. So we're gonna start with this brush and then we'll probably go to a finer brush here in a moment. Oops, okay. So, yeah, just keep working it until you like what you have. I'm gonna mess with this a little bit more and come back to you. Okay, so we're on to the last step. Um, I'm gonna use a little bit of pigment, a little uh, sienna. Um, I think this should look nice on him. So, as you can tell, I, I put a little bit of basing on this guy already. I'm just gonna brush a little bit of this along the edges of his cloak. Some people use uh, some pigment um, sealant or fixative. I don't, I don't really bother. I'm gonna use the uh, purity seal to do that. There we go. Let's get, oops, let's get in that recess a little bit. There we are, okay. Let's give it a spin. All right, here we are, the finished product. Uh, I wasn't sure whether or not to do anything with the blade. I think I might look at doing something with it later on, but yeah, here we go. Um, I am incredibly happy with how this turned out. Uh, it also took a grip of time. I mean, three nights for this guy. Uh, granted, if I wasn't filming a video, I might've been able to knock it out at night. If I was doing all three, maybe it would've taken me two nights. Well, not knocking out a video, <laughs> but no, I'm, I'm super stoked with it. Um, I mean, I love how the cape turned out. Uh, I think that's, oops. Um, I think it's just like a nice little, little addition uh, to this guy. You know, like it really makes it stand out. You know, you have that warm color of the, uh, the gold armor and then having that cool purple. Um, yeah, it really helps. And then, I mean, I, I dig the, I wasn't sure what I thought about that, the, uh, the red top knot. But I think that carrot orange, um, the carrot top orange really helps. Uh, also all those layers of sepia, um, I think are really important because that, uh, it really kind of burnishes that gold. I mean, it's just, you know, it's one of those things where you just, as you're going along, you're like, I don't know, I don't know. But then it all comes together and you're like, shit, it worked. <laughs> so, um, this will hopefully be the first of a, a, a series of custom videos. I know the bikes are coming out soon. Um, so there's at least that. And, uh, so go ahead, subscribe, please, please, please subscribe. Um, YouTube is changing its user agreement or not user agreement. I'm sorry. It's a, um, uh, partnership agreement. So we need to get a few more subscribers in order to, um, keep some of the ad revenue. Otherwise Google keeps it all. Um, 
And uh, yeah, and also it helps justify if we start getting a little bit of a paycheck, chances are I'm gonna like go blow out of proportion and buy a whole bunch of gear to make uh, better quality videos um, and justify doing more of them. So if you like what you see, or if you hate me, <laughs> subscribe. That way it justifies us continuing to do this. All right, thanks a lot, guys. See you next time.